Venus, the solar system's first habitable planet. When we think of the development of the solar system, we imagine that before Earth developed life, there was nothing much of note to write home about. There's a small possibility that Mars may have once had oceans, and an even smaller possibility that it might have harbored life. But in terms of complex life, in terms of habitability, Earth was the guy who shot it first, right? Wrong. Because according to recent studies by NASA, Venus was the solar system's first habitable planet. Number three, second rock from the sun. If you were to visit Venus today, you would encounter a hellish world that would crush, burn, and choke you the moment you stepped foot on it. With average surface temperatures of 462 degrees Celsius, enough to melt lead, Venus is the hottest planet in the solar system. And I don't mean it's got thick thighs and an ass that won't quit. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, but second in line Venus is hotter due to its thick atmosphere having caused a runaway greenhouse effect. It's like if your friend were stood in front of a roaring fire, but you were stood one meter away in 1,000 woolen jumpers with a piping hot water bottle at the core. Your friend is getting warm, but you're roasting yourself to death. Hot temperatures aren't the only thing to worry about on this planet. Venus's atmosphere is mostly comprised of carbon dioxide, with its upper layers consisting of thick clouds of sulfuric acid and sulfur dioxide. Venus is also subjected to atmospheric pressures 92 times that of Earth's. To experience this here, you'd need to dive down in the ocean to a depth of one kilometer. Despite these horrific conditions, Venus is often referred to as Earth's sister planet, since the two worlds are almost identical in size, with just a 638 kilometer discrepancy between our respective diameters. Venus also possesses 81% of Earth's mass, while also sharing our makeup of a central core followed by molten mantle and crust. But in recent years, we believe we may have discovered a more startling common trait between these two neighboring planets. Because in addition to the similarities we've already discussed, it is theorized that Venus may once have looked and felt a lot like Earth. So much so, that to look at Venus is to take a glimpse into our own terrible future. Number two, back to the future. Scientists at NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies have used a computer modeling system to predict the future of climate change on Earth. These findings, unsurprisingly, tell us that without intervention, the greenhouse effect we are currently experiencing will continue to heat our planet until we become a non-delicious form of toast. Feel free to argue against the NASA guys all you want, folks. Just make sure your research is as thorough and your conclusions are as logical, won't you? Jolly good. Oh, also, I forgot to say, if you disagree with the existence of climate change, then you're not allowed to believe in or enjoy any of their awesome theories about Venus either, since they're based on the very model we've used to calculate the future of Earth. You see, those clever folks at Goddard have applied their climate computer modeling system to Venus, albeit in reverse, because this allows us to work out what it might have been like before it became superheated. What they've discovered is that Venus has suffered an extreme version of the greenhouse effect due to the suffocating presence of its thick atmosphere, which traps an immense amount of the sun's heat. But according to the Goddard model, this wasn't always the case. Three billion years ago, NASA believes that surface temperatures on Venus were similar to those on Earth, which means it probably had a number of shallow oceans too. Eventually, due to its proximity to the Sun, Venus was stripped of its water through evaporation, and the resulting hydrogen ended up in space. In turn, this hydrogen trapped carbon dioxide, leading to the greenhouse effect and toxic atmosphere Venus possesses today. An atmosphere so toxic, scientists have taken to naming it the Twitter sphere. Okay, they haven't, but they should. God damn, I hate that place. Furthermore, it is thought that volcanic eruptions in Venus's past may have filled in any potential ocean basins over the past billion years. 
But before that, if the planet rotated, experienced plate tectonics, and enjoyed a carbon cycle in the way we think it did, Venus would have been perfectly habitable for billions of years, only ceasing to be so around 750 million years ago. This means that Venus could have easily supported the existence of biological organisms. And if that's the case, then one other theory might just catch your eye a little. For it states that the presence of life on Venus could be used to explain a biological mystery back here on Earth. Number 1. Venusian Panspermia If life was able to once exist on Venus, complex life may have had time to arise from it given that the planet probably contained liquid water and it remained habitable for a billion or possibly billions of years. It is by no means certain. Because the presence of water does not guarantee life, but it is certainly more likely that life once existed on Venus rather than Mars. Like a couple on their first date, Venus was warm and wet during its early history. But like a couple who have been married for 20 years, Mars was probably cold, arid, and lifeless for the majority of its existence. So if life did exist on Venus, what did it look like? How complex was it? Were there Venusian mammals, dinosaurs, or hedgehog raptors? We just don't know. To find out, mankind must investigate this now scorched planet a little further. Answers as to the composition of Venus's ancient biosphere may lie deep beneath its surface. And while it's unlikely highly complex animals managed to evolve there, at the very least, we expect that small, multicellular organisms would have. If they did, a few of them may have hitched a ride over to another planet you may have heard of. Earth. Panspermia is the hypothesis that life is seeded throughout the universe by tiny organisms which are distributed on meteoroids, comets, and planetoids. Panspermia is an accepted scientific theory which offers a plausible explanation for how life began on Earth. But until now, nobody thought that the seeds of life were so locally sourced. We think that the first inhabitants of Earth came into existence around 3.8 billion years ago, making it possible that life began on Venus first and was transported via meteorites. However, it is considered more likely that Venus helped seed complex life to Earth after simple life had already begun here, with Venusian multicellular organisms kick-starting an event known as the Cambrian Explosion. The Cambrian explosion was the sudden appearance of complex creatures which took place on Earth 541 million years ago. In her paper, The Venus Hypothesis, Dr. Annabelle Cartwright of Cardiff University attempts to solve unanswered questions about the causes of the Cambrian explosion by attributing it to activity on Venus. The Cambrian explosion synchronizes with a major resurfacing event which took place on the surface of Venus between 600 and 400 million years ago. Dr. Cartwright's calculations make it clear that material ejected from the surface of Venus, either through volcanic eruptions or meteor strikes, could have easily reached Earth intact with a transfer time of just 150 days. Prime candidates for Venusian heritage are tardigrades, nematodes, and triops cancriformis, the latter known more commonly as sea monkeys. Yep, you heard correctly. Those weird little fish bugs your mother bought you because you were too stupid to look after a hamster. Yeah, those microscopic aqua critters you once drank for a bet when you were drunk. Their direct ancestors could have come here from the planet Venus. We're going to explore this idea and how it may have happened a little further in our bonus video, Venus, Mother of Earth, which you can watch in our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then that's bullshit. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth, to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question.
Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strange mysteries.